In the previous videos we've talked about how we can use Composer to manage PHP packages, but how do we actually manage PHP modules? Historically this task has been performed by using Pair, which is a dependency manager for PHP specifically. Pair is quite an old school package manager however, and its usage is on the decline. The installation process for Pair is quite straightforward especially if you have PHP installed already. As you can see here, it's simply a matter of having a PHP installed already and typing PHP go pair that far. And this will download all of the packages associated with pair into the relevant directory. Once you've downloaded pair, you should be able to access it from the command line simply by typing pair. To confirm that you have the actual current version of pair, you can type pair version, which will echo out the current version, as well as other details such as the PHP version which is currently being used. During the installation process of pair, a whole host of packages are installed by default, which are typically installed in a pair folder within your PHP directory as you can see here. And information about these packages is available by selecting packages on the Pair website, which details all of the packages and how to use them. So for example, we can look at this file package, which gives us some basic information about it. If this package wasn't installed by default, you can simply type pair install file, and this will install the package directly from the PHP website. And here you will also notice two of the major problems with Pair. The first of which is the fact that this package is not maintained. A lot of the packages you will notice are quite old. So for example, the last release for this package was in 2012. And this is because the Pair file dependency manager has fallen out of use, especially in recent years with the introduction of things like Composer. The second problem that you will notice here is the fact that packages need to be registered on the Pair website in order for them to be included at all. This is vastly different to things like Composer, where the only requirement is that the package is accessible. So if your package is hosted on GitHub, it's ultimately accessible through things like Composer. And this is because of another problem with Pair, which is the fact that all modules or packages which are installed are installed globally, and not limited to the actual project in which they're intended to be used. Assuming packages are all legitimate, this isn't a problem. But if a security issue is present in any single one of the globally installed packages, that same floor is accessible to all packages which are installed on the same web server. Fortunately we have the file package already downloaded, as you can see here. So if we want to, we can include this in our projects with no problem. So how do we go about doing that? Well I've gone ahead and created an empty test page here, which is just an empty PHP file. So for example, if we save the word hi and refresh the page, that will appear. But instead, we're going to actually use some PHP codes to include the packages that we've already got access to. So the first package that we're going to include is called system.php. This is the main system package included with Pair. And to access it, it's simply a matter of typing the name of the PHP file. The fact that the file is in a separate directory to our actual program, as you can see here, we don't have a pair test.php file. It doesn't actually matter. Pair will identify this and include the correct file anyway. So once we've required it, we can I'll put some text just to confirm that it's being included properly. And to do that we're just going to var dump and we're just going to check whether the class exists. 
in the class we're going to look for is called system. So if we go back to our browser and refresh this page, we can see that this is now showing us true because this file's been included into our project, no problem. Now we were looking at the file class earlier on. So we can do the same again here. And it's simply a matter of including the file.php file. And in this case we'll instantiate Now we're no doubt going to get error messages, but the error messages will confirm the fact that we have access to the file class. And as you can see here, we did actually have a pair error. Something common amongst all of the other package managers is the creation of JSON files, which manages the versions and the actual packages which are installed. Pair doesn't have this facility, primarily because Pair was created long before this idea ever caught on. But the fact that it doesn't have JSON files which record versions and packages installed does make it quite unuseful. Because it makes replicating environments extremely difficult. Especially if you're not working on a web server, which most people aren't. It's very easy, for example, to install a package locally and then forget to install it on the remote server. And even if you do install it on the remote server, it's easy to get the versions wrong. At the time of creating this video, the best practice to handle this is to either not use Pair as your package manager, or if you specifically need the low-level libraries which are included in Pair, to use things like virtual machines to manage your web servers. If you use a virtual machine, it's very easy to clone the entire machine and to deploy that entire virtual machine, including all of the packages on remote servers. This is a topic that we will look into in more detail in the later series. But this is ultimately the reason why things like Docker, for example, are becoming so popular. Because once you've configured your environment, you simply transfer that environment onto a remote server, rather than trying to reconfigure everything on that remote server. This video also marks the end of this series. The series was intentionally brief, as it was intended to just give you an overview of different types of package managers, and which ones are appropriate for different scenarios as well as some of the history about why older package managers have fallen out of use. If you found this series useful in any way, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe.